John Lawrence Sullivan was the best bare-knuckle fighter in the world. In his first seven years as world champion, Sullivan overwhelmed 23 opponents in six rounds or less, and he drank under the table all those men he didn't fight. Jake Kilrain pictured here figured he could easily beat the rum-soaked champion. John L. agreed to give him a chance. The Sullivan Kilrain fight in 1889. This is the first photograph ever taken of a fight while it was in progress. The man with a shaved head is the wrestling champion of the world in Sullivan's turn. Muldoon got John L. into the best shape of his career. Jake Kilrain on the right is proven as ever faced. Notice John L's bare right hand. Round 75, two hours and 16 minutes have his fighting ends under the broiling Mississippi. Jake Kilrain lies on the ground, too battered to rise. The great Sullivan be the last championship fight fought with bare knuckles. Then in 1890, at the age of 32, the champion took his fistic talents to a new arena. The great John L. became an actor. But while Sullivan developed his acting talent, a handsome pompadour figure, James J. Corbett, catapulted into the boxing limelight. The game would never be the same. Corbett became known as the father of modern boxing. In the middle 1800s, the Marquis of Queensbury, an English nobleman and fight fan, sponsored a new set of boxing rules. Boxers would wear leather gloves and rounds would consist of three minutes of fighting and one minute of rest. And so when Jim Corbett challenged John L. Sullivan on September 7th, 1892, it was the first heavyweight championship bout held under the new Marquis of Queensbury rules. This true drawing is the only record of Vic's Sporting Club in New Orleans, 1892. No photos exist, but evidently it wasn't much of a contest. The will of the wisp Corbett danced like a matador around the floundering bull of a champion. In the 21st round, Corbett opened up with flashing punches and John L. Sullivan toppled to the floor. Jim Corbett was the new heavyweight champion. This is freckle Bob Fitzsimmons, a New Zealand fighter. He had earned a fight with heavyweight champion Corbett. The date, March 17, 1897. The place, Carson City, Nevada. This is a newspaper drawing of the fight scene. It looks like there was standing room only. Now be prepared for historical evidence of a credibility gap. Photo of the scene. Ordinarily, this kind of turnout would spell financial disaster. But in this unimposing ringside shed were three Veriscope motion picture cameras. The film they took made more money than all of the purses of the previous heavyweight championship fights put together. That's Corbett on the right, Fitzsimmons on the left. Here are the movies made in 1897 of the Corbett Fitzsimmons fight, the first heavyweight championship contest ever filmed. Gentleman Jim stands ready and seemingly impatient for round one to get underway. The bell rings and the scheduled 25 round bout begins. In the foreground in the derby is a timekeeper for the fight, Fat Masterson. The old frontier gunfighter had become a fixture in the fight scene because of his undisputed effectiveness in collecting guns and knives from the spectators. Corbett with his back to the camera is still ahead on points and Fitzsimmons Simmons' nose is bleeding badly. But amazingly, the challenger is starting to press the fight. Corbett has been boxing well, keeping Fitzsimmons off, but Bob Fitzsimmons is definitely coming on. At this point, the all-nitrate all film starts to disintegrate, but a somewhat viewable version of the 14th round knockout was assembled from potato chip-like fragments. Watch Fitzsimmons on the right step on the Corbett's left jab and land his own hard left to the champion's midsection. Gentlemen, Jim collapses. Corbett has evidently had the wind knocked out of him. He's still down when the referee completes the 10 count. And Fitzsimmons raises his hand in triumph. In slow motion, let's see that again. Here comes the left hook that Fitzsimmons on the right later called his solo plexus punch. The champion goes down to his knees. He tries to crawl over to the corner of the ring to pull himself up by using the ring rope.
Meanwhile, Fitzsimmons stalks around, keeping a close watch on his progress. The referee and timekeeper, Masterson, seems out of sequence, but it is obvious that Corbett will not beat the count. Gentleman Jim has lost his heavyweight crown. Corbett's stocky sparring partner, Jim Jeffries, wearing the white pullover, goes to the aid of the post champion. Remember that name, James J. Jeffries. In 1899, Fitzsimmons decided he would defend his title against Corbett's former sparring partner, James J. Jeffrey. Jeffries had won his first 11 professional fights, but he was considered slow and clumsy. Coney Island, New York, June 9, 1899. There were no films taken under the artificial light, but Jeffries got home with a thunderous left hook in the 11th round and knocked out the rugged Fitzsimmons. James J. Jeffries became the new heavyweight champion. Here's the rugged Jeffries as he looked in his prime. Later in 1899, Jeffries met Sailor Tom Sharkey, pictured here. Sailor Tom was a rugged knockout puncher. Sharkey had given Jeffries a terrific battle before Jim had won the title. Their return match was the last important fight of the 1800s. This is a newspaper photograph taken just as the fight got underway. It was also the first indoor fight successfully filmed. The special lights used were so bright, the fighter's hair was thin. The referee even wore a hat. The official movies were lost, but this version of the fight was pirated inside a cigar box. That's right, shot with a camera that was hidden inside a cigar box. The quality isn't too clear, but you can get an idea of the scene in the incredibly bright lights. A hat of a spectator will occasionally block out the foreground. Jeffries is the larger of the two and the slightly darker trunk. James Jeffries eventually won by a decision over Sharkey in the 25 hard fourth round. <laughs> Jeffries, pictured here, retired in 1905. He had no one left to fight. What was left of the competition had melted into air at the prospect of facing the man who was now billed as the world's strongest human. Little Tommy Burns felt he could follow in Jeffrey's massive footsteps as undisputed heavyweight king. Burns defeated Marvin Hart and laid claim to the vacant title. In 1907, Tommy Burns is about to meet undefeated Australian challenger Bill Squires. The date, July 4th, 1907. Bill Squires on the left, working himself into a fighting pose for the photographers. The referee is the retired undefeated heavyweight champion, James J. Jeffrey. Famous announcer Billy Jordan shouts his famous letter rest. The five foot seven inch Burns is giving away four inches in height to his opponent. The balding Australian challenger is a three to one betting favorite because he came into this fight with the impressive record of 37 straight knockouts in 37 fights. But tiny Tommy Burns will get home with his equalizer, his booming right hand. is down, but he's right up. The referee, James J. Jeffrey, is watching the action. Flyers hit the deck again. The crowd is stunned, seeing their three to one favorite on the canvas. Squires in trouble. Tommy Burns now goes to work with his dynamite right hand. An explosive right. Squires is out cold, flat on his back. No doubt about this one as referee Jim Jeffries counts over the challenger. It's all over. There's pandemonium in the ring. A most convincing victory. Here is a picture of dapper Tommy Burns as he looked in 1907. 
Tommy had defeated seven challengers. 